Welcome to the CEI Vehicular Winds Tunnel Apparatus Tester Operations Manual. To begin this manual, two displays of the working apparatus will be shown. The first is under normal conditions. Now a display of the apparatus working under alternate conditions, i.e. with the hood up. This apparatus allows for the testing of multiple scaled model cars. All that is needed is a 7mm box end wrench and the removal of four nuts to detach any current model. As will be shown by Alex. All that is needed to attach the new vehicle is to replace the four nuts once placed on the rod. The attachment of a new model can be difficult due to the small size of components used. For this reason it is recommended to work together with groupmates to attach the model vehicle, as can be shown here. A little longer than a few minutes later. To 
insert the apparatus into the wind tunnel, remove the intake end from the wind tunnel and raise the center of the wind tunnel up. Insert the apparatus into the center of the wind tunnel at an angle. Line up the bottom plate holes with the holes on the bottom side of the wind tunnel frame. Insert the four screws with small washer then large washer on each, from the inside of the wind tunnel through the bottom plate holes. Reattach the wind tunnel intake. Hand tighten the bottom plate to the bottom of the wind tunnel with a washer, lock washer, and nut on each of the four screws. This is displayed in the following video. A few minutes later. It is important that the test bed is able to glide seamlessly across the track. Visually confirm the test bed is centered in the holes of the bottom plate and test to make sure the test bed moves seamlessly as shown in this video. After completion of assembly, next is wiring. Route the wires through the holes at each end of the track, noting which wires correspond to the which load cells. This is done to keep the wires from interfering. Position the Arduino container so that the wires are more than sufficient length. The two sets of wires connected to the back two amplifiers correspond to the front load cells to measure lift. For ease of connection, the dots indicate which way the wires should be connected. The next two sets of wires to the amplifiers correspond to the back two load cells, these measure downforce. The last set of amplifier wires are connected to the vertical load cell, which measures drag. The three loose wire will be connected to the pressure sensor, red corresponds to dot, black to line and blue to the third pin. This is displayed by Dustin in the following video.
Starting the lab is as simple as following the instructions on the LCD display. The switch is the master power, used to turn on the system and in case of emergency shut off. The button is used to select the different options displayed and when held while in a lab, will act as a soft reset for the system. This is displayed by Dustin. In between tests, ensure that the test bed is reset. Also ensure that the track does not move and no sudden forces are applied to the table during testing. Another area of error is to ensure the wires are making proper connections. A final important note is before numbers are displayed the apparatus is preparing proper data gathering. During this time, do not touch the apparatus. In the event a load cell breaks, here is the process of calibrating a new load cell. Attach the load cell externally and plug the wires into the corresponding plugs utilizing the wiring diagram and the following video. Once connected to the Arduino, load the provided calibration program. Once loaded, place the 50 gram mass on the load cell and follow the instructions in the code to find the calibration factor. Once the calibration is found, replace the broken load cell with the new one and place the calibration factor into the main code in place of the old one. We would like to acknowledge Florida Polytechnic University, Dr. Watson, Dr. Kames, and fellow peers for the resources, knowledge, and patience for the completion of this project.